I was driving my life, Mike. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I am on my way to practice right now. I've never been the type of player that like has had a problem taking it from the range to the course. Really, it's been the other way. I'm usually a better player on the course than I am on the range. Usually I hit it kind of like all over the place on the range and then uh, do a little better on the course. But recently it's been the other way. It's been the way it is that you always hear it is for everybody. I don't know if it's like a driver issue or what, but on the on the range, like I'll hit out of uh, 10 drives, I'll hit nine of them pretty darn close to the center of the face. But then on the course, I am literally all over the face. I'm uh, in the heel, in the toe, everything. And then so I went out and I played yesterday. Our college is closing, the college that I've been assistant coaching for. They're closing. I went out and played on the course with the team for the last time yesterday. And when I was playing, no matter what I was doing in my pre-shot routine, like, you know, trying different things, the swing, particularly the backswing, looked exactly the same. Like it was just like slightly tucked, let's say like one club head inside the hands on the way back. So I started to think to myself, what is the point of doing all these back swings and all the uh, all these uh, pre-shot routine feels if you're just gonna end up making the same exact backswing when you go to hit the ball anyway? Like it's, it's exactly the same. So for the last four holes, I said, I don't care where this ball goes. I don't care if it gets lost. I am gonna make the backswing that I wanna make. It's going to be through the hands, like when I'm working with the hanger or when I'm working uh, on the range or things like that, it's gotta be through the hands. There you go. I was able to do that. I was able to accomplish that for the last four holes. All right, same thing, Cal. Yep. I am gonna make a great takeaway. I don't care if I lose this Bridgestone, but look, I'm gonna be like this. Yeah. I'm headed to practice. I think something that would be good to consider is like, okay, what's your intention like for the day? Like, what are you trying to accomplish? And today I was thinking about what Bobby Lopez said to me a while before about you got to beat it into submission. Whatever your issue is that you're trying to get over, you like, you really got to lean on it. So that's, that's my, what I'm trying to accomplish today is to have, make lots of good really good work towards solidifying a good takeaway. Then I want to be able to take it to the course and I want to figure out like, okay, what am I doing that's a little bit different on the course or maybe this little too... See, I wouldn't say that it's too complicated. I wouldn't say it's too complicated what I'm doing on the course because what I'm doing on the range is more complicated. I'm doing all kinds of feels and weird things on the range. And uh, I, I hit it like way more solid than I do on the course. The golf course that I'm, I'm going to today, I'll be able to go out and uh, practice on the course as well. Let's go. Okay, I made it to the range and something interesting that I've been hitting a lot of shots left. And I was thinking of the hanger mostly is helping me with the takeaway, right? But Mike who's over here was saying that my left shots are coming, like he says, like I'm folding over on it. So basically it would be like a flip pull. So I noticed when I was hitting this and I had just been using the hanger mostly just for takeaway reasons. But when I hit this, I'm like, wait a second, I'm not hitting any shots to the left at all. So there's gotta be, and I can tell when I have this on, it makes me turn more this way and this way. So that's kind of how I'm starting up and through. And that'll keep you moving, and it's straight, so that, that won't go left. I mean, the game plan is to really try to ingrain a better takeaway. And a takeaway that then will lead to more rotation through the ball. Let's see if I can do it again, drive it just a little bit lower. Not lower, but right now any shot that doesn't go left is like a small victory. Let's get the takeaway right. A little bit punchier. The tough thing to do is make this draw. Because you can't do this to it. So to make it draw, I'm going to have to do it like this. Yeah, like that. That was really good. That's great. That's what I need. 
Okay, let's put the driver in here and see if we can figure out why um, I'm centering in here and try to figure out a pre-shot routine to make it go to the course for when we go to the course. Something that Lee Dietrich said to me the other day was really good. He said, okay, if you didn't move your shoulders at all, show me what a backswing would be without moving your shoulders. So he said, a lot of people will go like this, right? Where the shoulder, where the chest does, see how the chest isn't moving? The right arm kind of collapses and they're trying to get the hands behind them this way. They said, he said, that will lead to a takeaway that's like this. If you're thinking that's what it does. He said, but actually what it does is goes like this. If, if you're doing the right arm, see the hands go up and they go a little behind you, but only like that much. And then it lays it off like that. So that's the takeaway. There's the downswing. Okay, so we're gonna. This is my takeaway. This is my takeaway with turn. Okay, a little quan flow here. Starting my right side. I'm oh, straight but healed. Okay, so what my uh, what my idea is is that that first shot that went started left and then went further left is basically the club going like this. It's coming in from the inside and then hands are stopping and it's going like that. That's why I, it's impossible to hit that shot with the hanger on. So the hanger's on and I'm gonna go. See, that's just dead solid, like four yards right. So I need to get that feeling as well in my driver. Big backswing, have some patience, All right, look that way. And my intention is to have a great takeaway. That's a straight shot that faded to the right side of the fairway. That's pretty good. So before we go to the course, let's put it in a context that would be like, okay, I teed it up. I'm hitting it, trying to hit the between those two, uh, to the right power, power tower. Okay, great takeaway. Look at my target. I killed it. That's so good. All right, finally. That's good. Okay, that was great. Basically, what it showed me is there's something that's happening when the hanger is on that is not just a takeaway thing, but then also on the way through, you got to keep going through here because you're not able to um, flip it over in order to square the face. You have to square the face with the body more. So that's something that's like that really good recently i was uh went through two different levels of dr kwan's certification so level one and level two so now i'm dr kwan level one and level two certified and the thing that stuck out to me the most in that class there was a lot of different things but there's a lot of different uh graphs and and like pictures in there that really illustrated some things but what i liked a lot about that is that similar to what lee was saying the functional swing plane starts basically when the club is parallel to the ground then you hit the ball and then it's again when the club is parallel to the ground but what's interesting is that they're not equally distant from the ground so on the way through this club is here and let's say what is that like mid thigh high then you hit the ball and then when it gets parallel to the ground again it's now like at like almost rib high so and because we're on this plane this is more out that way and then when you hit it it's got to be up because it's going further up this like roof of the house there so that's the kind of the feeling of swinging left that a lot of people talk about so that was one that was one of many things that i thought was really interesting and the thing that ties that together is step drills and flow and stuff if you're trying to go to the ball see i'm never going to get this over here where it needs to be but if I get my body leading it and through it, that'll be better. Like that, that was really good. Great for a wedge shot. That was good, really good. All right, let's take that to the course and see how it looks out there. Are they okay or are you gonna wait? Yeah, go for it. All right, so here's out on the course. This is literally like, one minute after I hit that last drive, Mike and I went out on the course here. This is Links at Victoria. 
which is south of Los Angeles. So here's the drive. This is a par five. I'm trying to hit a draw here. Should have waited. It's good one, huh? Yeah, yeah, I hit that so good. Like my best drive in like a month or something. It was it was really good. So here's Mike teeing off. And Mike nice. just hits his driver so good all the time. So uh, he, he he's going up. right at them. He went Mike went about six or when seven yards past me. I hit mine uh I hit a five iron from two ten, like real close to the hole, so I, I was happy. This is Mike's six iron and it's going right at it as well. How good is that? Falling out of the air a little bit. He'll bounce and he'll be on the front. So he's putting for Eagle. Eagle putt for Mike. He's 199 out. Or one, yeah, something like that. Oh, he got it there. He didn't get it there. Good putt. Here, film this. I got an Eagle putt myself. I, get, I, did, I had a five iron from that 210. And we got a great bounce. Let's see if I can take advantage of it. Pretty flat, but breaking to his left. Should be on that one. He cuts out. Stay up. Oh, Stay up. Man at speed, just like yours. Ah. Good Brady. So the goal here was just to film all the tee shots and do kind of like, not a full vlog, but just kind of showing how I can take driver things to the course. Fine, it, right? it did help playing with Mike because he is a, like a really, really good driver. So this is dog leg left. Uh, if you aim to cut off the dog leg, it ends up giving you a lot of room to the right because you can fade it quite a bit and still be fine. So I'm trying to hit a fade here, but I'm basically trying to hit like a straight, straight ball. Started off really good, good solid impact and then faded. All right, two fairways in a row. So the, the range work is working out well so far. And uh, 139 left to go. Got a wedge, but Mike says in this kind of conditions going this way, it'll probably play more like 134. Yeah. Yeah, the golf course is in real bad condition. The greens are fine though. So, and so it's, it's perfect for you're just working on your game, especially if you're just working on driver and putting. And the stuff in between, you just lift clean and place it, whatever. Pitching wedge. Go. Got it up on the green. Big bounce. Not very good, but got it up there. Okay. I got a big bounce. So on the green. There he goes. What do you figure you have, Mike? Uh, 94, so I'm chip a sandwich. 94, 94, chipping a sandwich. Ooh, that is right on line with it. All right, come on. You're trying to go past and bring it back, right? Yeah. Really good. good. So Mike hit that really good. He made a par. I too putted for a par. Going to a short like 311 yard par four. Mike hit it really solid and uh, he'll be just short of hole high on the left hand side. So this is what I'm uh, starting to feel where I hit a great drive to start. It's kind of starting to degrade. I'm like what exactly was I working on on the range and it's like falling away from me a little bit. All right, so I made three uh, birdie and then two pars, but the first drive was like better than any drive I even hit on the range. Maybe as good as that last drive that I hit on the range, like amazing. The second drive, like a little iffy and it kind of like did like went straight into the fairway, but like, you know, had that pulled and then faded back to the straightness. And then this last one was like the worst. So they're kind of degrading. So then it's kind of showing me like, okay, what is, on the range that's then starting to decay as I'm playing on the course. So um, uh, I got just a, a tap in for a par over here and then I'm gonna try to really get it back and start thinking about like, okay, what can I do? What, are, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to hit it on the center of the face and uh, have a great takeaway. And just have be much more like simple, athletic and simple. All right, here's Mike with three wood. This is like, a, I don't know. Less than 400 yard par four. And Mike said this is the best three wood he has ever hit in his life. Best three wood of my life. Nice. So he loved it. And he's been struggling with his three wood recently too, so, okay. so I'm sure that felt good. All right, now I'm trying to hit like a low controlled drive here. There you go. 
which I did. That was good. It, the swing tracer is not always very perfect. So hit it to here, and this is like, I think, 105 or something like that. I'm not sure. Left that out to the right. Anytime I try to take something off a wedge, it's out to the right. Mashed. All right, so we parred the, the short par four, we parred the, the regular length par four, and we parred the par three. Now this is a par five, and this is a drive that's in the, on the right-hand side of the fairway, like fairway rough line, kind of. I hit a great three wood from there, and then uh, made a par after missing a putt. Oh, I love it. Mike hit a a good drive down the center there. Watch that swing back in slow motion if you can, and let me know how does he hit that ball straight from where he impacted it on the face. It's got to be something he's doing with his hands different than me. All right, something about that I did not get through the shot, and I blocked it out to the right. Hit a good, sh hit two good shots after that, like one really solid but too far iron shot, and then one uh, really good, good chip to make a par. Really good. So I'm coming into this hole one under par. Mike just hit a, a good drive. I think he's two or three. Mike, I think, has shot 63 out here before. Maybe, maybe, maybe more better. He plays out here all the time. All right. So this is. I need to at least make a par to shoot under par here. So I was trying to swing a little harder and I, I kind of caught it on the top of the face, but I hit it straight. Still haven't caught that magic of that first drive, but I think what I learned from the range is to really have a great takeaway and a much bigger and a wider right armed backswing. Now this was a 117 yard shot that I hit my, with my 54 degree wedge because uh, of the way the lie was. And here's Mike for his final shot of the day. Really the only that's good wedge tempo. complaint he has about his game is that he's just yeah, not hitting really his wedges answer. close enough, but it zipped. Oh no. His pin control was not on point there. All right, so that was positive because I got a good strategy on the range and then I was able to bring it right to the course. And that's the thing that when I heard about they had a schedule that Tiger Woods put out of what his normal schedule was like during his like uh, his uh, like the 2000s and the schedule. The thing that I noticed about it is that he is on the range a lot, but he he's on the range and then he goes plays nine holes and then he's on the range and then he like plays three holes. So having a, a place to or in a situation where you can get on and off the range is really good. That way it, it can bridge over. So uh, for me, I was able to hit like that first drive. I was never able to hit as good as that in my very first drive. But my first drive and then my last drive again were uh, were really good and kind of the way that I want to like operate my game going forward. And I was able to shoot under par, so that was that was good. It was a little bit of an easy course, but and uh, positive experience going forward. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think. I do have a uh, people have been asking me like when is the next uh, school with Dr. Kwan. There's going to be one in September, but it's going to be very, very small. It's only going to be about six people and in San Diego. So I'll let you guys know about that. Uh, if you go to bebettergolf.net slash school, you'll see information about that. See you guys. Bye.